Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks postgame podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app and use the promo code CHGO when you sign up. Happy Saturday night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Tough one in Edmonton tonight. The Hawks lose 7-3 to in a game where, boy, they were just hanging on for dear life. And then the Oilers just kind of broke everything open in a three minute and 33 second span. The Oilers scored three times and that was pretty much the game. I'm Jay Zawoski. Greg Boyson's with me here tonight too. Mario is feeling under the weather, so he's taking the evening off, which is understandable, but he'll be back with us uh, for Monday's show. Uh, a reminder on that one, by the way, we're going to talk to ESPN's uh, Emily Kaplan on that one, so don't miss that one. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe as well. If you are listening on the podcast, make sure you're subscribed and following there too. We have single digit tickets left for our CHGO Blackhawks takeover. That is Friday, February 10th against the Arizona Coyotes. You get a ticket to the game. You get a CHGO hockey t-shirt. You get two free beverages at the Goose Island Brew Pub before the game. And you get to hang out with me and Greg and Mario and all the great CHGO Blackhawks Listeners, if you've not gotten your ticket, this is truly your last chance. These will sell out by, well, I'd say tomorrow. I guess technically it's still tomorrow. Five minutes from now, it'll be today. Uh, <laughs> so make sure you jump on those tickets and join us at the UC on February 10th. It's going to be a fantastic night. When will then be now? Soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, so Hawks lose. Uh, what was it? Seven two. Yeah, seven three. All right, they got that last one from Taylor Radish. Um, seven three is the final, and I just gotta say, I know we're gonna probably spend a lot of this show talking about Connor McDavid, but you can see, and it's not just the Hawks. When teams play against him, they are terrified. They are always looking over their shoulder. They need to know where he is at all times. And guess what? Half the time they look and they go, oh, my God, I don't see him. He was here a second ago. Where did he go? Oh, he's celebrating. That's what's happening right now. Yeah. The dude is unbelievable. Um, we can get into the conversation someday about where he ranks all time. And that's that's kind of our poll question. We got one going right now on YouTube. Do you have him ranked in the top three, top five, or top ten all time? Give that a vote and we'll update the standings as we go along throughout the show. Uh, but I, I tweeted it out during the, the game, Greg. I've seen all the greats. I've seen Lemieux. I've seen Gretzky. I've seen Yager. I've seen Messier. I've seen all these guys in their prime, and they're all great, and they all dominate in their own special way. But I've never seen a guy like Connor McDavid where every time he's on the ice, he is a threat to score. Yeah, he is. He is crazy. All you need to know about how good he is and how rare of a talent he is, is just listen to Patrick Sharp. Every time he touched the puck tonight, Patrick yeah. Sharp, a three-time Stanley Cup winner, former NHL, NHL All-Star, is muttering, unbelievable. Oh, geez. Like, all every time he touches the puck, Patrick Sharp is in awe. And and to get a guy like Patrick Sharp in awe of of your talent, that's a special player. Well, he was talking about it during the game, too. Uh, I think uh, Chris Vosters asked him, like, did you ever play against McDavid? And he said a little bit late in his career, and he did everything he could to get off the ice when McDavid was on it. <laughs> he knew it was just going to end poorly. It was. It's just an unbelievable uh, – there's that new commercial for the NHL going around where it shows the old NHL video games, and then it compares it to the modern game, and they say the next golden era is here. And it's true. We are really seeing the next generation of – great hockey players and guess what another guy on that list Connor Bedard is going to be in the league next year hopefully for the Blackhawks but they've got a ton of great young exciting talent you look at all the studs on the avalanche Drysidle, McDavid Connor uh, Sidney Crosby is still performing at a high level there's so many guys in the league right now that are just electrifying and uh, McDavid at the top of the list the guy is just he's insane he is insane like we've seen the Hawks play Toronto and Austin Matthews is a guy who scores 60 goals, but it is not a constant state of fear every second the guy's on the ice. Because he's either going to score a goal or he's going to set up a teammate with a ridiculous pass. Like he's a dual threat. 
He's got 40 goals and 50 assists, and it's not even February. 92 points in 50 games. That's good if you like that sort of thing. Like, he's got 50, over 50 assists. No one on the Blackhawks is going to sniff 40 assists this season. We he's got more assists. Great player on this team, right? He's got he's gonna he's got more assists now than probably anybody on the Blackhawks will get points this year. It's insane. He's got over two hundred shots on goal. And our our uh, Liam McHugh tweeted it the other day. Imagine you know being the best player in the league, and then in the summer deciding I'm also going to be the league's best goal scorer and just doing it. Yeah. And that's what he did. McDavid said when they got eliminated last year, he said maybe I just need to take it upon myself to score more goals. Okay. <laughs> sure why not he's gonna he's gonna score at least 60 I yeah mean, there's no doubt he's he might get 70 or 80 at this point i mean unfortunately for him there's no more games against the blackhawks uh but you know he's still got lots of games against the ducks and the sharks and and the pacific division so you know it's he's a rare rare talent and and we're we're all getting the Alex Ovechkin record chasing mm-hmm. mode here for the next couple of seasons. If he stays healthy, he's most likely going to break Wayne Gretzky, and then we'll have about a seven or eight year break when all of a sudden we can start going. Hmm, is Connor McDavid going to break Alex Ovechkin's record? For real. I mean, if he keeps doing this, I don't see any reason why not. I mean, he's he's just playing a different game than everybody else. And how would you like to be Leon Dreisaitl? You got 75 yeah. points, and you're 17 points behind the leading guy on your own team. <laughs> You'd be leading every other team in in the league in points, but you're almost 20 behind the guy, your line mate. It's insane the fact that like this team hasn't done more with that type of, with that player and with that – you know, and with those two guys, Drysaddle and McDavid, the fact that they've never, you know, won a cup or even been to a Stanley Cup final at this point, it's got to be maddening for Oilers fans. But it just goes to show you that you got to have an entire team, you got to have depth. And that's why, you know, yes, Connor Bedard is the big goal for the Blackhawks this summer. This roster is built to get that number one overall pick, but it's all those other picks are meaningful too. You got to hit on just more than Connor Bedard. You got to get guys in the second, third, fourth, fifth rounds that can play third line, fourth line, third pairing def- defense. Maybe mm-hmm. get a goalie that's worthwhile. You can have McDavid and Drysidel, and those guys can dominate the league, but they're going to get beat by a better team in the playoffs every time. And so. Yes, while we all want Bedard, and God, I hope he's here. But <laughs> yeah, you know what? Three first round picks last year, four at least four over the next two seasons. So you're talking at least six first round picks and counter Bedard. That's how you build a team if those guys develop and hit their potential. Yeah. And I, I think too, like I think for a long time a lot of people with Dry Sidle were like, well, he's just playing with McDavid, and that's why. He is from time to time, but it's not all the time. You know, it's not like they're joined at the hip 24-7. The power play, yeah. But Dreisaitl deserves some credit for being a great player, too. Yeah, and he's not Michael Bunting riding Austin Matthew and Mitch Marner's coattails. Yes, no. exactly. He's, crea- he's creating just as much offense as McDavid is. Well, almost 20 points less, but still <laughs> but still very good. Uh, he's unbelievable. Should we talk about the Hawks a little bit in this one? Do we have to? I had a, you know, I, I, can we just be CHGO McDavid podcast tonight? Cause that's a, that's a lot more fun to talk about at this point. Maybe in a couple of years we can talk about that. But, uh, 2026. There you go. Um, I, you know, I watched this game and I, I can't muster any anger. I just, they're just so outmatched. They're so, the, the speed comparison, like there's teams that are not as talented as Edmonton but they can at least skate with them. There's really no one on this team that can skate with, with the top guys on this team. Um, they The first period, you know, five on five, they were hanging in there. The game was pretty much dead even, and then everything fell apart in the third, but some bad penalties. You know, Ian Mitchell takes a bad penalty. The Seth Jones one was a little bit, yeah, it was a penalty, but it was kind of meh. And they go two for two on the first two, and then the floodgates open. You you got to know this is the top ranked power play in the NHL. You've got to stay out of the box, yeah. and uh, I don't know. I think both of those first two probably could have been avoided, and they were a little bit frustrating. 
Yeah, it's uh, if the Calgary Flames showed up the other night, it's probably what should have happened in Calgary too. Really? Um, yeah. At least on paper, that it should that should have been a beaten too, but you know they didn't show up. It was like the Flames got or the the Oilers got insulted when the Blackhawks tied the game. They were up one nothing. That first period was kind of eh. It was just kind of like nobody really wanted to make a mistake, and then they gave him the power play, and and then Jason Dickinson ties the game up with his second straight goal. Hey, playing with Patrick Kane has its perks. Yeah, uh, no matter even if he's injured and disinterested, it's working pretty well for D- Jason Dickinson right now. Um, but you know, it's like all of a sudden the Oilers were like, okay, enough effing around. Let's. Connor McDavid said, "We're not losing to the Blackhawks. Let's go." And uh, I was one Patrick Kane goal away from hitting an awesome four-leg parlay. I almost won some big bucks tonight. Um, I had the over at seven and a half um, because neither of these teams can stop the other team from scoring. I had a Connor McDavid anytime goal, and I had the Oilers scoring first with a Patrick Kane anytime goal oh. and i was like and when they put in the 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 college kid in goal at the end i was like give it to patrick <laughs> come on i need it but it didn't happen but uh yeah it's the talent gap the speed gap. like i think i think Connor mcdavid could have played 18 against one tonight and the oilers still would have won four to two it sure felt that way but it, yeah it's just it was one of those nights where just even after the first it, it just felt like inevitable, right? Like the like the onslaught was coming. It was going to happen. Um, but let's talk about Patrick Kane a little bit in this one. Uh, pretty solid. Pretty pr- solid performance. I think over the last two games, he's been pretty good. Um, Jonathan Taves comes back, scores a goal. Um, he kind of put on the third line in this one as they sort of work him back. Only played 15-11. Uh, not good at the dot, by the way. Four, four wins, seven losses for Taves in this one. Um, but good to see him back and good to see him looking a little bit more spry, a little faster, uh, a little more engaged in this one. So I don't know. It's it's again, I'm, I'm having trouble finding anything to be real upset about. And we were talking about before the game, like, is this the day we debut the tank commander uh, segments? Uh, and and Steven said, should we use Peter Mrazek? But what's he going to do? Like, the, like, none of those do I really look at and say, well, that's on Mrazek. You know, I he's just the guy's under siege. Yeah, there there was an over forty shots. All those goals, you know, you can't really. I can't think of one that you're like, oh come on, man, you got to have that. You know, it just, yeah. you know, he's. I can't imagine what it's like to be uh, sitting between the pipes and having ninety seven and twenty nine coming at you at full speed. I mean, that can't be fun. That that's got to be scary. And uh, so yeah, you can't pin anything on, on Peter Morazic. It just. This is a game that probably went exactly how it should have when you just put these two teams together. I mean, yeah, they were there for a little while, and then they had, they, then it just felt like the Oilers were were toying with the Hawks and just were like, okay, we're gonna put in this third, we're gonna put in a third string college goalie in the final four minutes because that's you know, and I know that wasn't showing up the Blackhawks, but. You know, it, it, it's it was a fun moment, but I mean that's that's the type of night it was. Like, um, so you know, can't you can't really get upset as you said. There's really not anything. There were a few things that irritated me out through the night, but again, you just got to look at what what's going up. And, and is it just me, or is when you play the Oilers, is McDavid out there like 57 minutes? <laughs> Yes, it feels like that. It seems like every time they have the puck, McDavid's out there. He he he's everywhere. He is everywhere all the time. Like he plays on all four lines. Yeah, it's like Thanos said, he is inevitable. And there was a, a part in the third where I was just kind of like, I took a shift where I just isolated on McDavid, and it was a T in there, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and there's a uh, <laughs> there's McDavid's in a defensive zone for the Oilers zone, and just kind of gets a puck out like towards the middle, and the transition starts the other way. And then McDavid just streaks up the right wing boards. You know, he's passing everybody. You know, he's like the dickhead on the highway driving on the shoulder, you know, 95 miles an hour. And he times the entire rush perfectly where the rest of the team's coming, the puck's coming, 
The puck crosses a blue line. He is a second behind it, breaks down the right wing and gets right in front of the net. And the pass is fed right out in front to him. It's just, it's not you just can't... speed. It's not just the hands. It's not just the passing. It's the intelligence. And that's what, when Gretzky was asked about, it was actually on a Spartless podcast of all places. He was asked like, what was it about you that was that made you so much better than everybody? And he said, I had the ability to know where the puck was going to go before it got there. Jedi Knight. Yes, and that's what McDavid's got that, and the physical tools, and the size, and the speed, you, and the you can't hands. coach that. You can't coach that. Yeah, that's exactly. that's natural ability. That's why Wayne Gretzky was a bad coach. A bad idea to even think he could be a coach. You yeah. can't teach that to somebody. You either have it or don't. You have to have the midi chlorian count in your blood, <laughs> or else you can't do that. He is the chosen one. Yes, uh, it's 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 unreal. Uh, Quentin with a comment on uh, Jason Dickinson. He says Dickinson's the only player on the team that's ready for Kane at all times. He never looks surprised when the pass gets to him. I kind of agree with that. He has had kind of a knack for. Having the stick down, you know, keeping your eye on Kane. It's a quick lesson to learn. Once you miss it once, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, I need to be ready for this all the time. And I'm sure a lot of Oilers feel that way, too. Um, yeah. oh, who was it? There was somebody in the slot. It might have been uh, might have been Hyman. And uh, McDavid just got a boop, little pass out to him real quick. And he he got a one-timer off. I think he got blocked. I think but it was McLeod. It was, you're right. Yeah. It was McLeod, yes. And you, you just got when you're playing with players of that skill level, You've got to be ready all the time. And, yeah, I think Dickinson has done yeah. a good job. Put your stick down and head to the net. That's what all you got to do when Patrick Kane, he'll get, it, he'll get it on your stick. Just keep it on the ice and drive to the net. He's done that twice. That was almost a mirror play of how he scored uh, in Calgary. You know, Kane took the – along the boards, he, he drew in the extra defender – and he just flicked a little backhander to the center ice. Now you could debate maybe he was going for Philip Kurashev because he was in the vicinity, but he had a body on him. And maybe Kurashev saw that Dickinson had broke towards the net and let it go. I don't know. Um, but whatever, it worked. And it was almost the same exact play we saw uh, in Calgary the night before. So, you know, yeah, Kane's been pretty good the last few games. He's on a three-game point streak. He's got points in five out of his last six games. Let's not worry about the diminishing trade value here. Like he seems yeah. to, he seems to be that knee issue seems to be, uh, you know, not not bothering him as much as as it was, you know, when he first got back. These last three games, he's had that jump in his step. He's had that swagger to him a little bit that's been missing most a lot of the season. So, um, you know, he's got he's got some uh, he's got a little hot streak going here, and then uh, you know. That's good. If he decides here in a few days to say, yeah, put me on the trade market and you stay red hot. That only makes things better for everybody. Yeah. Uh, hey, thanks to Chuck Omoko for pointing out this quote uh, that Ben Pope from the Sun-Times just put up. This is Patrick Kane talking about playing with Jason Dickinson. He says he drives the middle of the ice really hard. If he keeps doing that, defenses are going to have to honor that. And it just it's just going to give me more space on the outside to make plays as well. He does a really good job job i believe that is the first time all year we've really heard patrick kane go out of his way to praise a teammate and i don't mean yeah. that in a bad way but there's been so many times this year where kane has made the play and the line mate has just not had the ability to complete it um kane's always had some success with some straightforward guys right that just yeah he's always he's had to bring kit and panera and those snipers on the left wing but he's played pretty well with some grittier centers too uh, obviously Taves and, and a couple other guys like throughout the, his career, like Artem Anusimov was not a highly skilled guy. No, he, he went to the front of the net and put his stick on the ice. That's it. Right. And it, it goes on and on for sure. Um, so that's interesting. It's, it's, it, I wonder if that will, will stick together for a little while. And Huggy Bear is asking in the chat. So if we're making the Metaclorian Star Wars reference to McDavid, does that mean McDavid is Anakin or Luke or is Gretzky Anakin? I'm going to say that Gretzky is Obi-Wan, McDavid is Anakin, and Connor Bedard is Luke. <laughs> okay. Because there's a possibility that Connor Bedard is Luke. <laughs> does, that, does, that, uh, does that make Gordy Howe Yoda? Yes, Gordy Howe okay. Yoda, exactly. All right. <laughs> and Bobby Holes, whichever drunk Jedi there was. <laughs> 
Hurry his Palpatine where you thought he was great in his start and turned out. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's Bobby Hall's the uh the Jedi that praises uh the Empire in a yeah. newspaper article after his career is over. <laughs> Palpatine had some good ideas. Yeah, just he's misunderstood. <laughs> These are the jokes we can make at twelve fifteen. Uh, well, you know, it's screw Nazi sympathizers. I don't care. Um, yeah, I, oh, I don't want to piss yeah. those people off. Yeah, I'll do that at noon. <laughs> anyway, awkward transition. You may have noticed our new uh, beer sponsor. We are really excited to welcome Goose Island uh, to the CHGO family, or maybe maybe they're welcoming us to the Goose Island family. However you want to spin it, we're happy it's happening. They are Chicago's beer since 1988. My buddy Charlie, the bacon guy, sending me some pictures. He's stocking up on the Blackhawks Pale Ale, which I am out of because I went out with some friends last night and those were gone. Uh, but Blackhawks and Goose Island Beer Company, they've been neighbors for 25 plus years. Uh, the Goose Pub in the UC opened almost 10 years ago and the tap room is a pregame destination for Hawks fans. We're going to be in the Goose Pub in the United Center for our takeover on February 10th. They've done a ton of charity work with the Hawks over the last two years, but that's not it. The Green Line, that's my wife's favorite. The Matilda is uh, great when I'm feeling bougie. And, of course, the flagship, the 312, is absolutely fantastic. Remember, their two locations are open and ready for you. Grab a beer right from their innovation tanks at the Goose Island Tap Room at 1800 West Fulton or get a smash burger and a fresh beer of the week at the original Clybourne Brewhouse, 1800 North Clybourne. For reservations and pickup, go to gooseisland.com slash locations. Goose Island Beer Company and CHGO, a match made in beer heaven, my friend. Yes, and uh, Ducks and Yotes heading to overtime. Perfect scenario right there. Um, hey, uh, later today, since we're after midnight, it is Sunday. And Sunday, it's a big day if you like the uh, American-style football. Uh, there, I've, From what I've been told, there are just four NFL teams left, two conference championship games kicking off later today and only a few more shots to win big on the playoffs with DraftKings sports book an official betting partner of the nfl and our best friends in the whole wide world counting down to super bowl 57 at 57 good right, lord yeah. new customers can bet just five dollars and get 200 in free bets instantly 200 that sounds like a really good a really good deal Agreed. Not a new customer. You can still feel the conference championship thrills with the stepped up same game parlays. Take your shot at an even bigger NFL payout and boost your winnings with each leg. You add up to 100%. Going to be a lot of fun. Two great games tomorrow. Uh, that AFC game, Chiefs, Bengals. Man, it seems that the Chiefs are in this game and are in this game every year. Bengals looking to get back to the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes. You got it all right there. That NFC game is going to be really good too. You got the high-powered offense of the Eagles with Jalen Hurts, which reminds me a lot of Justin Fields against the tough, stingy defense of the 49ers. Should be a lot of good good football tomorrow. So download the DraftKings Sports Book app and use the code CHGO. New customers can bet $5 on the conference championships and get $200 in free bets instantly, like immediately. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yep. Oh, there's my $5 bet. Holy crap, my account has $200 in it. That's as easy as it is. Only at DraftKings Sports Book with the code CHGO. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply see the show notes for details you mentioned uh, american football and uh our buddy chris foster's loves to say that american thanksgiving all the time when he's referencing it um did you see the pregame uh walk and talk with sharp and vosters outside like what are we doing <laughs> like let's Those poor guys Patrick sharp was like i don't get paid enough for this shit yeah, yeah. you know and they've done that stuff a lot, the the walk and talk, which I like. It's a kind of a different take on a pregame show. But they were saying her coffee's ice cold. And then they also said, like, it, towards the end of the shoot, like, the camera gear just gave out because it, it got so cold. It was, uh, I think the thermometer said one degree, and the, uh, and the wind chill was minus 18, and that wind was whipping. They showed the flags, and it was like they were stiff. Yeah. I think they're razzing. I think they're razzing Sharpie for being a part timer. They're like, go go send the part timer out in the cold. 
Um, it was kind of funny when they got back uh, to the to the booth and and Voster still had his uh, his his toque on and uh, Sharp said, "Nope, uh, it's in my contract. I have to show my hair." So you know, hard to hard to argue with that. Yeah, that is uh that. Hey, you know what? I know that's not true, but it should be. We there should be it nothing be. hiding the, the beautiful face of one Patrick Sharp. Uh, boy, it's you know we see him in the press box. It's like he walks by and there's like a. And there's like the like the Dreamweaver music playing, like Wayne's <laughs> World, you know. Like, yeah, your heart your heart skips a beat, and <laughs> he parts the Red Sea when he walks through the press box. Everyone kind of steps aside and like admires the uh, the handsomeness that is Patrick Sharp. But uh, more importantly, really good guy and uh, a growing, really high quality broadcaster. I really hope that they find yeah. him on more games. Yeah, I think I think him and Vosters are, are are getting better. I know Chris takes a beating from some, and yeah, he makes he makes some mistakes. But every broadcaster does. Hockey is not an easy sport to do, especially when it's your first time. And there were a lot of miss uh, names, wrong names tonight. But those those numbers on those Oilers jerseys yeah. are a little tougher to read. So you know, I, I I'll give him a little slack. You know, it's not like nobody has a perfect broadcast. The dude puts in the work. And he wants to be better, uh, and he's getting better. And I think him and Sharp have have a good chemistry, especially when they have uh, Colby Cohen, who I know is not everybody's favorite flavor of broadcaster either. But when he's in between the benches, that's where he's at his best. Yeah. So put put people in positions to succeed, and they're going to do a great job. I think when the three of them, uh, Foster, Sharp, and Cohen, are on the broadcast, it's it's very good. It's got the potential to get better. Um, so hopefully that's where they go next year, but that's up to Patrick Sharp if he wants to invest, you know, a full 82 game season. I know he's got, you know, uh, wife and kids, young, younger kids, and, you know, you retire to spend time with your family. And I'm sure jumping right back into a full NHL schedule, probably, you know, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Based on some might, conference- might get some eye rolls back home. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we'll see. Yeah. I wouldn't count on him doing a full season, maybe a little bit more. Uh, you know, next year and beyond, but I, I don't think a full time thing is in the cards for him. Um, yeah, I just don't think I don't. it's he wants. I uh, got a couple oh. chats here. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I know. I just said maybe, maybe they're grooming Chelios to 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 join that. You well, know. They, they should get him in there more then. Yeah, I, 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 it depends on his ESPN gig. I mean, we see him in the press box. Yeah, he was there a whole bunch, but that might have you know I don't know what the deal was, but there was like three or four games in a row. You know, he just happens to jump in the elevator with us as we're heading back to the studio. And, uh, you know, maybe, um, you know, they've got options. Um, but, uh, you know, it also could be, I know it's the Blackhawks are more in charge of it, but you know, NBC, you know, they're kind of in flux right now. So they might not be yeah, putting a, that much effort into, you know, getting the best people out there either. Uh, Mike in the chat says he was in Edmonton minus 35. He said he waited an hour and a half in that wind to meet some Hawks. And yeah, he tagged us on. Yeah, uh, did see those. That was awesome. Uh, Jonathan Taves, Luke Richardson, a couple others. Uh, so Mike, you're a braver man than I. Um, That's dedication cool to right there. Cool to get to meet some of the Hawks. And they actually we were talking about that uh, during the broadcast, that there were a lot of Hawks fans around looking to meet the players at their practice and the skate and everything. So um, that's awesome. I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad that happened for you. And it looks like the Ducks just won it in overtime. Trevor Zegers with the game-winning goal. That's a shame. You hate to see it. <laughs> yeah. Now the Blue Jackets can just get a winning streak going here. Yeah. It's going to be tough. That's, that's going to be but with, uh Not that, you know, not that Gustav Nyquist is that big of a game changer, but it's just another guy to add to the yeah. list. Like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, maybe the All-Star break will do him some good. Yeah, well, they're gonna fi- they were going to trade him at the deadline anyway, probably, but probably another month without him that they would have had him, and maybe that's a win or two, and it's all going to matter as we uh, as we get down to the to crunch time here. Um, I want to shout out a, a Hawk, and we'll get to him a little bit later as we get to our uh, stars of the game. Seth Jones um, despite his inability to pull that bouncing puck out of the net, he did his damn best. And the penalty, which I didn't love. Um, overall, I think he played a really solid game on the ice with Connor McDavid a lot. Him and McCabe were sort of taxed with uh, keeping Connor McDavid under control. Um, only a minus one for Seth Jones. He had four shots on goal, four shot attempts, two hits, and two block shots. 
he is a different guy. I don't know what happened. I don't know what changed. He is so much more aggressive offensively. Um, they mentioned it too. Like even a- after the penalty, which came really early in the game, I have the exact time uh, right here. The Seth Jones penalty came 4:57 into the game, and Patrick Sharp pointed out that's the second time in the game he had already pitched in, looking to generate some offense because that penalty was committed right in front of the Oilers' net because um, he had just activated from the D to try to get in front and and score. I don't know what I don't know what got into him. I don't know who said what to him, but since he's a, asserted himself offensively, he's been better defensively. And it's fair to point out, Jake McKay probably deserves some credit in that too because Seth doesn't feel like he has to be offensive option A and defensive option A at the same time. That's really yeah. tough. Yeah, he can worry about just his side of the ice and his assignment and not have to peek over his shoulder to make sure, you know, Jack Johnson actually made it down to the end of the ice or whatever. He doesn't have to cover for anybody. So, yeah, it takes a little pressure off of him. And, you know, he, we've been hearing from him all season that uh, he wanted to shoot more and he wanted to shoot more and be more aggressive and you know, get more points. And then all of a sudden it just started clicking. It was it was right around, uh, you know, right around when he got named to the All-Star team. Um, and it was also right around when him and Jake McCabe were put together. I don't think that's a coincidence. Um, so yeah, he's been, you know, he's been what you've wanted when you, he's been the defenseman that you thought you were going to get when you traded for him. And it's taken a year and a half for him to get whatever his problem was last year, confidence wise when he in the offensive zone, but you know he's uh, finally becoming the guy that the, the Blackhawks thought they were getting when they acquired him, and it's good to see because you know you say what you want about him, he's going to have his critics until the the day he's no longer a Chicago Blackhawk. But he's a he's a solid hockey player. He's a solid dude. Uh, you know, and I, I I'm happy that he's getting some consistent success here. Well, if if he keeps playing like this, the critics are going to, not all of them, but a percentage of the critics will quiet down because they have a little bit already. Yeah. And what he's been doing lately is what was advertised when they traded for him. Was this a guy who can be one of our top scorers, even as a defenseman? He's going to be dependable, you know, uh, keeping the puck out of his own net. And whatever's happened over the last 10, 15 games here for him, it's what we all sort of thought we were getting when Seth Jones came here. Because we all admit, look, like, we're, we've always been supportive of Seth Jones because it's not his fault that the last guy gave up a, a, a King's ransom to get him. It's not his fault that the last guy gave him a contract probably a little richer than he deserved. Of course he's going to sign that. If, if Brandon came to me today and it's like, hey, you want an extra $5 million? I'd be like, yes, I don't deserve it, and I'm not worth it. But yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm not, you know what I mean? But I'm no dummy. <laughs> right. but, uh, but, you know, he's he has shown lately that he is he is worth about what that salary is and i hope that he can you know i hope that he can keep going as he is and hawks fans can kind of start to embrace him cuz guess what after this summer there's a high potential that he's going to be your highest profile player unless Bedard's here um he's going to be the star of the team and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that since he's been here, the Blackhawks have been really bad. Yeah. Uh, and not and, and showing up and not winning games doesn't help. So, you know, he starts playing like this Seth Jones consistently for the next couple of seasons, you know, and then the Hawks start getting better. And he's a reason for that. Then you, you'll still have the haters. I mean, Corey Crawford had his doubters until the day he retired. And so you'll still have them, but they'll be they'll be few and far between, and they'll they'll start getting uh, shouted down more often. And just you know, I, I'm happy for Seth Jones. The Blackhawks need it, and uh, he needs it too. Yeah, and Corey says with the cap going up, Seth Jones's contract will look a lot better in three absolutely, years. Absolutely, absolutely. And by the time we're halfway through that deal, just like. When that Duncan Keith deal was signed, everybody was like, oh my God, you're giving $5.2 million to a defenseman? You're crazy. And then five million, five years later, oh my God, we're only paying this guy $5.2 million. Same thing with Corey Crawford when he got $6 million. It was like, you're overpaying for him. And by the end of that contract, you were like, 
this is one of the best values in all of hockey. So the market changes, and the, if the cap goes up, you know, some of these young defensemen, you, you think Rasmus Dahlin is going to cash in here real soon and, and Owen Power and guys like that. Kale McCarr got his big paycheck, but some of these young superstar defensemen of the future, they're going to blow right past that contract, and it won't seem as bad as it is. Uh, we got a question in the chat from Jump Master Dan. Uh, thanks for joining. It looks like a new name. Not one I've seen before, I don't think. There's a couple new names in here. We appreciate that. Make sure you smash that like button as you watch. Uh, that would that would be very helpful. He says, what are your thoughts on the goalie situation? Staylock, Stauber, Soderbloom. Um, like the alliteration. Yeah, I, you know, uh, it's two games with Stauber. He's looked good so far. I don't think that he projects as like an everyday NHL starter or backup. I think maybe the ceiling for him is decent backup. Um, maybe on a, on a good team. Um, if I had to kind of handicap which goalies will be on the roster when the Hawks are good again, it's probably Drew Camesso with Soderbloom backing up. I think in the Hawks' mind, that would be the ideal outcome. There's also a good chance that the Hawks goalie, when they're ready to contend again, is not on the roster or in the organization yet. Maybe. Yeah. Um, it's Peter Mrazek's net from here on out. I'm not um, I'm not very optimistic about if and when we see Alex Stalock again. I mean, he's on his second concussion of the season. Yeah. It's not good. So don't screw around with that. If we don't see him again, I, I, I'd be okay with that. You know, I want Alex Stalock to be healthy. You want to talk about good dudes? Then he's he's great. Yeah. Um. So, um. Stauber, these two starts are a surprise because he was not. He was average at best in in the AHL with the Ice Hawks. Like he was losing playing time to Mitchell Weeks and Dylan Wells. Um. So you know, and, and then Soderblom has not been great since going back to the AHL. He got hurt in like his second game back. I think it was a hamstring injury. Um, and since he's been back, he hasn't been, he's had, I think three starts, maybe four, I think four, two of them have been pretty good and two of them not so good. They lost again tonight. I saw have lost seven in a row right now. They're going yeah. through a funk and not a great uh, goal in the overtime winner for the wolves. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of that has to do with speaking of guys who aren't playing well since going back to Rockford, Lucas Reichel has been very disappointing since going back. And I, I think, it's in here right now. Uh, I think they they I think they screwed his his head up when by sending him down after those three games. It's, that was our biggest concern when you and I sat here on that emergency podcast. That's what we said. Boy, I hope that doesn't happen. I'm not saying for sure because I I don't live inside Lucas Reichel's head, but it sure looks like it because he has not been the same player since they sent him down. But back to the goalies. Um, you know, Stauber has been a nice story, but I, it's just way too soon to start declaring him an NHL goalie. Yeah. Um, this was a kid that was playing in college last year. He's here out of necessity, not because of how great he was playing. It's not like he had a 927 save percentage in the AHL. He had a sub 900 save percentage in the AHL. So, you know, let's not anoint him a goalie of the future. He's a nice story right now, and he's got some work to do. He could be an option. I don't see him being a long-term starter, but things can change. Goalies are weird. Hey, no, no. Uh, Joshua mentions the sign Portillo, of course, the, the goalie from the University of Michigan, who is rumored. Uh, I know he was drafted. I can't think of the team off the top of my head right now. I know he was drafted, but I believe this June, if he doesn't sign by this June, he will be a uh, a free agent. And why not? A, yes, the whole Portillo in Chicago is a perfect match. It is meant to be. It would be a lot of fun. But he's a darn good goalie, and you can never have too many goalies in, in your system. Sabres. This, you, this, played, Sabres, way. right. And they don't really – I don't think they're going to go crazy. They got the, they've got their goalie of the future. At least they believe they do. And Uko Luko Pekka Nuklin or whatever, however you say that. But, uh, you know. It'd be fun to put him out there. You can never have too many. As this year is proving, you can never have too much goaltending because uh, the two veterans you brought in here to, to do the, the bulk of the work can't stay on the ice. And now you're you're bringing up guys who probably – well, Soderblom, they wanted a whole year. There, There's no way Jackson Stauber was considered NHL ready. 
Dylan Wells was up here. He's not NHL ready. So, you know, you can never have too much goaltending. Uh, let's spend a second on Reichel here um, because it is interesting. I did watch a, a good chunk of the Ice Hogs game um, while the Hawks were in intermission. I, I watched overtime and, and he, there were a couple moments in overtime where he flashed and looked like the Lucas Reichel we saw where he put on the afterburners, was the fastest guy in the ice, etc. cetera. Um, like you said, and like I said, I do think this sent this demotion hurt him mentally when he was here. He was feeling like he was here in his comments, uh, you know, when he got called up and his comments uh, and practices after the couple games he played, he sounded like a guy who felt like he had made it and had finally, finally, finally been permanently promoted. Then he plays really well. Then they send him down and he's not responded well. I do want to say, though, it is on Reichel to pull himself out of this, right? Regardless, if you want to prove your maturity to the organization, it's on you to an extent to get out of the funk, get back to where you were before you were called up in the first place and start playing the way you played to earn the call up, right? Yeah. Like You can't pout. You can't go down and be like, poor me, poor me. It is what it is. The Hawks have been very clear about what the plan is this season. Kyle Davidson says that he communicated to Reichel exactly what the plan was this year. And I know it's frustrating and I know he's done everything he's been asked. His time is going to come with this organization probably soon. But if he spends the next two, three weeks continuing on the, on what he's been doing since he got sent down, they're going to think twice about calling him up after the deadline. Cause you know, as soon as Domi or Athanasiu you or, or maybe Taser Kane are gone, he's going to get called up and he's probably going to finish the year here. But he has to earn that. And by going down there and kind of laying an egg, I don't know. It, it might be the reason he didn't get called up for this Western trip that Luke Philp was given the call um, yeah. instead. It might have been like, well, you know what? You're not playing well. So we're going to reward a guy who has been a very good pickup for us and, and let him get a little NHL time. I'm sure he's heading back to Rockford once they get back here. Um, just got the email from the communications department, which is so weird to see. The Blackhawks will not hold practice January 29th through February 4th. <laughs> it's a little – and not to get off topic here, but is like half the league taking this whole week off? Because it seemed like I was watching – I was flipping through games today, and it seemed like there are a ton of other teams that were playing their last game today. And based on the schedule – next week there's only like six teams playing so it seems like half the league have the week before the all-star break off and then the rest of them will have the week after the all-star break off it's like even more than half it's, it's it's weird it's hashtag nhl i mean well i mean i'm all for if you can get rid of the bye weeks in a two-week span i'm all for that instead of spreading it out through the season yeah. yeah yeah there's something to watch at least but yeah the logic is not there because if you look, all right, you got the Bruins, Hurricanes, Capitals, Maple Leafs playing Sunday. Monday, just the Blues and Jets. Tuesday, just six teams. Kings, Hurricanes, Senators, Canadians, Blue Jackets, Capitals. Then the Hurricane. Yeah, there's only like seven, eight teams playing this coming up week. So it seems like half the league has the uh, the bye week this week. And then uh, my guess is then the week following the all-star break. So everybody gets that extended break and it doesn't, you know, everybody gets the same days off. Makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I mean, I'm, I know uh, Huggy bear says it's not new. I don't think bi- without any hockey. Right. I mean, Huggy bear says it's not new the bye weeks before and after the all-star break. I just thought they were spread out more. We're like only two teams had a bye week each week and it was spread out through like all of January and February. Maybe I'm wrong. Lord knows I've been in the past and will be again, but I just, I just seems like a lot of teams have this upcoming week off. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's not everybody. Cause I don't know if I can take a whole, I can take a break no, from Hawks. No. That's fine. Oh, the, um, yeah. Give me that. I'm, I'm all down for this. No week of practice or games. It's going to be fun. We got, we got a fun week. Um, planned and, and no you know uh 12 38 fireside chats in the morning <laughs> either yeah, exactly uh actually later this month there's a bunch of like 6 p.m and 5 p.m starts 
they all balance out. They all balance out from these late night ones. We get the East Coast ones that are a lot better and easier to swallow. But hey, man, we're happy to be here. And we got a lot of people in the chat. I just saw Jumpmaster Dan said he just discovered and subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Dan. We appreciate that. Awesome. Uh, thanks, thanks for Dan. joining the chat and participating. It's always great to see new folks in here. And hey, this goes for everybody, but you too, Dan. If you got Hawks fan friends, let them know. We just started this company in March. Like, you know, we're doing great. We're growing and all those wonderful things. We got our CHGO uh, Goose Island partnerships and DraftKings and all that stuff. But word of mouth is our best friend. So let people know. Send them a link to our channel or to an episode. Tell them to subscribe and let them know about uh, becoming a diehard at allchgo.com. We got the sweet-ass merch that everybody loves, uh, including our new Hawks design. And, of course, we got a handful of tickets left for our takeover on Friday, February 10th. So uh, make sure you jump in on that before it's too late. Uh, come join us at the United Center uh, with our friends at Goose Island to see the Hawks and Coyotes. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you want to take care of uh, some business here, Greg? Sure, I can do that. Which one did I have? Oh, yeah, I had those guys. I had those. I want to tell you about some fancy golf apparel and accessories uh, that you can get from our good friends at Pins and Aces. Pins and Aces is the official golf apparel partner of CHGO. I know today here in Chicago, it's not prime golfing weather. It's not going to be for a little while. But we love our pins and aces gear here at CHGO, and you will too. And you're going to get a ton of compliments on and off the course when you deck yourself out in some pins and aces. They are a family-owned golf and apparel business. They make amazing polos, hats, golf bags, and even the favorite beer sleeve. It's an innovative product that allows you to store seven beers right inside your golf bag, and it keeps drinks cold the entire round. We don't have that problem right now. But eventually, it's going to be July, it's going to be hot, and you're going to be able to store seven ice-cold beers in your bag. That's one more than a six-pack the last time I checked the math, and that's going to give you the advantage over your buddies that have a warm-ass six-pack stuck in their bag. Check out pinsandaces.com and use the code CHGO to receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. That's pinsandaces.com. And with you blasting your furnace and uh, all your lights and your space heaters and everything this winter, ComEd wants to save you some money. With the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program, you can. They're committed to helping families and businesses and the communities they serve manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. ComEd offers a wide array of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across their territory. Customers can inquire about how to upgrade outdated lighting to energy and money-saving efficient LED lights, learn more about network lighting to operate your lights through your mobile device, and track your facility's usage and more. Incentives have recently increased for indoor, outdoor lighting, and networked lighting controls, making these projects even more cost-effective than before. Visit comed.com slash poweringbiznow to start saving money and energy and to start a project Contact us at 855-433-2700. And for more info, email businessee at comed.com or publicsectoree at comed.com. All right, we've got to get to all of our segments. We've got uh, the four stars of the game. We've got the DraftKings king of the game. we got our tankathon standings and all that fun stuff. But first, we have not mentioned it all day. Our buddy Jamie mentioned it early on in the chat. The full-on... Andreas, the time to see you experience on display in the first period, dude. <laughs> I felt so bad. I couldn't, <sighs> I couldn't even tweet about it. No. I'm just like, oh my god, this poor guy. He had the clearest break. If you missed it, and how could you miss a Hawks game these days? I can't understand it, especially uh, on a Saturday night. He had the clearest breakaway ever. He was going half speed. He was not like. Try, he was not fending off a defender. The puck got passed. He was in alone with time and space, almost like a penalty shot. That's how much room he had and just fumbled the puck and didn't get a shot off. It was the most Athanasiu thing I've ever seen. The, the oh Athanasiuist of Athanasiu breakaways. Yeah, it was one of those. And then they tried – 
our guy Chris Foster has tried to make an excuse and be like, well, it was towards the end of the shift. Maybe no. it was gas. No, oh. that had nothing to do with being tired. He, It was him and the goalie, and then the puck just said, nope, I'm out of here. Uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, one of those where all you do is just shake your head and be like, you know, what was that? What was the bit on the um, – on Family Guy, that's so Quagmire. That's so <laughs> Anthony CU. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the truth. Boy, that was tough. That we was have the Anthony CU and we have the Blackwell. We're good for one every night. The beardless Blackwell now. Even though it looked yeah, like it half of bad. it, even though it looked like half of it grew back by the third period. <laughs> Blackwell's got the beard that like goes up to his eyeballs. He's got like the uh the the Harry and the Henderson's beard going on. Um, yeah, it'll be back. Him and Juju Arcara should get in like a beard growing contest. They could probably just sit there and go. Yeah, it just pops out of their face. All right, let's do the four stars of the game. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, we have the three stars of the game. You're never going to guess. The number three star was Leon Dreisaitl. A goal, two assists, that's three points. He had three shots on goal. Zach Hyman, who is lighting up the league. That's another guy. Zach Hyman has 26 goals and... 33 assists. That dude is playing good hockey. Hey, that guy went from playing with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner to Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. Man, the hockey guys have smiled on his career. That's for sure. Seriously, that'll work. Uh, and, of course, your number one star of the game, Connor McDavid with a ho-hum three points, uh, six shots on goal. He was just awesome, as he is every freaking night. They showed a stat. He has only been held without a point five times this season. He's got more four point games than zero point games this season. Yep. How about that? It's insane. That's insane. All right. My four star of the game is going to go to Seth Jones. Talked about him a little bit earlier, but 22 36 of ice time. Uh, a lot of it defending Connor McDavid. Four shots on goal, four more shot attempts, two hits, and two block shots. Uh, I know he couldn't stop that puck from trickling into the net. Um, but really solid game from Seth Jones, especially considering who he was matched up against. So he gets my four star of the game. I am going to go with someone else we've spent a little time talking about, so we don't have to do much of it now. Patrick Kane, two assists, two primary assists. That's four points in his last three games. Uh, he's got seven points in his last six games. And both of his assists tonight were like the old school vintage Patrick Kane. I'm going to make a pass to the net. Get your stick down. We've seen the Kane and Taves combination do that so many times this year. It's... You, to the point where like hey how many more times are we going to get to see that you know so kind of a cool goal there on the power play uh two points for kane he's looking like he's getting whatever was bothering him before seems like he's getting that out of his system he's been playing well the last few games i bet you this this week plus off and not going to the all-star game is going to do him a lot of good Definitely. um so it's patrick kane's my four star and uh before we get to the tank standings just want to give a shout out we've got a international flair tonight we got uh mac charger from uh manchester checking in i know we have a, a germ fan from germany and at the beginning of the show i saw someone checking in from thailand um so hey we're all over the world today that's awesome love seeing that it's probably because we're on so late here it's yeah they're just waking up and getting their sundays started there there's thailand right now uh, so yeah awesome love seeing uh, of course, we have our Canadian fans here too. It's it's pretty cool when we're like we're thinking, hey, we're just talking to some some dudes, you know, in Mount Greenwood and Edison Park yeah, and Rogers Park. But <laughs> you know, the Hawks are a global brand, and to get to do this and talk to people from all over the world, it's it's awesome. No doubt. So thank uh, you guys for ch hanging out with us. Uh, before we get to King of the Game, because this guy is not King of the Game, but Tyler uh, Taylor Radish with another two point night. His 14th goal of the year, tying Max Domi for the team lead in goals. And and Taves. It's a three-way time. Yeah, we spent some time uh, chatting about him last show. But, uh, again, he just continues to play well, and no one really talks about him. Yeah, somebody so, asked me on Twitter. It might have been our pal Chuck O'Mucko. Do you, do, he said, do you, do you try and trade him for a draft pick or you hang on to him? I hang on to him at this point. There's no reason. I don't think the market's going to be much for him. And uh, at some point, as we've said, you just you got to start identifying guys and hanging on them. You need guys, NHL players next year. I was going to save this, um, but I don't want to forget about it. Today, there was an article in The Athletic about Philip Kurashev and talking about how he was such a great find in the fourth round, yada, yada, yada. But I found this little nugget in there, and it, 
think about this in the context of trade deadline and rebuilding and all that stuff, right? Like, oh yeah, trade Radish for a fourth round pick. Trade, you know, Lafferty for a fifth round pick. So 2018 fourth round is when um, Kurashev was drafted. Only two other 2018 fourth rounders, Paul Cotter of the Golden Knights and Jasper Weatherby, drafted by the Sharks, now with the Red Wings, have made more than six total NHL appearances. That's the entire fourth round is Kurashev and two guys you probably haven't heard of until I just mentioned them. So before we start just giving away 20 goal scorers, potentially, for lottery ticket late round draft picks, I look, you've got to have guys here that can play, and Radish is one of them. Lafferty's one. If someone's going to give you a second or a first for one of those guys, you start listening. But I'm not just giving up these guys for, for, hey, maybe if we get really lucky, this pick turns into Taylor Radish. Or you Sam have Taylor Radish. You got him already. Yeah. You got him already. And, you know, can't trade everybody. Exactly. You got you to gotta trade the guys you get value for. And trading Taylor Radish for a fourth round pick, there's no value there. Exactly. So just something to keep in mind as the trade deadline approaches. And you're like, why didn't they trade so-and-so for a fourth? This is just, it's not football. It's not like fourth round picks are not what they are in other sports. And of course, 2018 was a, a specifically bad fourth round. But if you go back through history, it's going to look very similar to that. We're like, eh, maybe a few guys pop and, and become decent players. But it's a, it's quite a quite a risk to think that any fourth round pick is going to be as good as Sam Lafferty or Taylor Radish. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Let's get to our DraftKings king of the game. Tonight, it is... Big Dicky himself, Jason Dickinson, a goal, three shots on goal, two blocks in 15.04 of ice time, and some praise from Patrick Kane. So congrats to Jason Dickinson. He is our DraftKings king of the game. And remember, uh, new users can bet uh, just five bucks and get uh, 200 back in free bets instantly with that code CHGO. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use that code CHGO. Start putting some money down on the conference championships. Anything you want to add about uh, Dickey? Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm willing to bet that he is more uh, impressed with being named the Draft King King of the Game than getting praised heaped on him upon from Patrick Kane. That's a bigger mean. honor. Yes. Bigger honor. They it's probably- bigger honor to be named King of the Game by two schmucks behind microphones than having a future Hall of Famer say you're really good at what you do. Well, you know the secret is the Hawks watch the show in the locker room, and then whoever we name is the DraftKings King of the Game, that's who gets the championship belt. Yeah, they won't admit it, but that's the truth. So it's, I, I believe it. I believe All right, it. Steven, can you jump on? I need to know a couple things. Where yes. are we at in our poll? Which was okay. Connor McDavid rank one through top three, top five, top ten? How does so that? This- this one's pretty close. So uh, top three is the leader right now with 38% of the vote. Top 10 is in second, very close with 35% of the vote. And top five in third at 28%. So it's pretty close. That's pretty good. But the fact that top three all time is leading. Yeah, it says a lot. That's pretty yeah, I'm, solid. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people who are voting top 10 are using the he hasn't won a Stanley Cup yet as their precursor. So you know what? I will be rooting for Connor McDavid to win a Stanley Cup one of these years. I want to see it happen. So yes. that whole stigma can go away. The other thing is, how many likes do we have? We have 47 likes. All right, let's get to 50. We'll get a bonus spin. That should be easy enough. Three more likes. We'll get a bonus spin. But well, let's take a look at the tank standings while we wait for y'all to smash that like button. <laughs> The Blackhawks still behind the Blue Jackets, who have 33 points in 50 games. God, that is putrid. They're so bad. Uh, the Hawks with 34 points in 48 games. Anaheim with 37 and 50. They won in overtime over the Coyotes tonight. So the Coyotes are now fourth with 38 points in 50 games, and the Sharks with 41. Sharks and- won today too. So it was yeah. a pretty good, pretty good tank standings day for the Blackhawks. Good tank day. Yeah, we just got to hope for. The blue jackets to get hot as I can't even get through this, this sentence without well, one. Well, maybe, maybe, you know, they can face a bunch of teams that get that stomach bug that ran through the Hawks locker room and they can get to face some AHL goalies. Yep. Uh, Lebowski five uh, reminds me that Nicholas Jalmerson's a fourth round pick. That's true. Yeah. True. There are those diamonds in the rough, but, you know, 
some guys you got here and you just say, I know him. I do want to point out we did get to our likes goal there. All right. We got, so we got the extra spin. All right. Let's, let's pull up uh, tankathon.com and spin the old tank wheel. And again, if we hit that, if the Hawks win it on the first spin, then we bank that secondary spin. So uh, let's, let's give it a run here and see what happens. Oh, come oh, on. We don't like that. Burn that one. Ain't Burn it with fire. This, the Highlanders jumped 10 spots and the Hawks. No, that is a nightmare scenario. Oh, my God. I might just quit if that happens. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, I will. I will break something on set if the, if the Blues win the draft lottery. Yeah, I might not be able to continue the show. So just so you know. <laughs> All right, let's hit one more. What do we got? Oh. There we go. All right, we're gonna end on a happy note right there. Chicago, Anaheim, Columbus, Arizona, San Jose. That's how it should be. Damn it! I like it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's live in that. Let's live in that land. All right. Well, thanks everybody for being with us here uh, late night. We greatly appreciate your time. Before we go, you're looking to get to a Hawks game. You know where to go. Game time. That is the place to get your tickets. It is the hottest new ticketing site, and they make it so easy for you to score the best deals of tickets on sports, concerts, and shows. You ever want to sit on the 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate, seats on the glass, four seats at a concert so Harry Styles can rip his pants right in front of your face? It's possible with the game time app that happened, Greg, if you didn't see it, check it out on the, I uh, missed that one. Yeah. Check it out on the old MySpace. Um, you'll find the biggest last minute price drops right there at game time. You will not find a better deal this season on Hawks tickets either. Remember there's only five home games left potentially for Kane and Taves. And that last one against Dallas at last check was like 16 bucks. So get in and it, that could very well be the last home game for Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves at the United center. Almost impossible to imagine and they guarantee the lowest price so if you see it lower somewhere else you won't but if you do by some fluke uh, reach out to game time and they will match it and if you love chgo you will love them the best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the game time link in our description join over 15 million people including me and greg who have downloaded the game time app and scored the best seats to all of our favorite events get that game time app you will love it. We good? I think we're good, right? I think we got all of our bases covered. All right, let's wrap it up. We are back Monday with ESPN's Emily Kaplan. Tuesday, we're back with uh, Shana Goldman of The Athletic. And Greg's got something really special on Tuesday that you're yep. not going to want to miss uh, all week at 2.30 this week, except for mm. Thursday, we're at 11. Yeah, I think Thursday, we're at 11 Yeah, 11.30. We'll, yeah. Com- we'll confirm that when it's not the middle of the night <laughs> right exactly hey we got to say though uh everybody here for this late night show we greatly appreciate it. Yep. it it means the world to us to have you here um after a late night and a blowout loss on the road in a non-marquee city you guys had, had every excuse to not be here and you showed up for us so we appreciate it uh so thank you thank you thank you and make sure on your way out if you've not done it yet smash that like button subscribe and on your podcast app hit subscribe and hey leave us a five-star review too We greatly appreciate that. Mario, get well soon. Hope you're feeling better soon, buddy. We'll talk to you all on Monday at 2.30 on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.